Hello and welcome back to ADV Revival 2 Swiss Round 1 matches. My name is Cobb. I'm back with some more Cobb Mentary, uh, if you will. And I have a very simple question, and that is, are you ready to game? And if not, why not? I know that these two players on screen right now are certainly ready, and we're going to see that unfold before our very eyes. On the left, we have Teraday with the username Valiant Battler Exter. And on the right side is James67, also known as Boshinator6. The previous five Boshinators do not even compare, let me tell you. Now, lo and behold, the gameplay. The leads, of course, will both be Tyranitar. The situation is commonly known as the most accurate personality test in the field of psychology. Uh, so many different sets and options being represented here. We have the earthquakes, the rock slides, the brick breaks, of course, to hit the opposing Tyranitar, focus punches to punish switching. Uh, we have the special and mixed sets with crunch fire blast. Uh, so many different options, and with no other information to go off of, what you choose to do here is uh, largely determined by how you wish to express yourself as a player. Let us continue. Teraday will be the one charging up the big gamer punch, taking a nice chunk out of Skarmory. And we see an immediate pivot out of Charizard to punish the Protect, uh, attempting to chip heal a little bit. And Skarmory's life is on the line. Lantern will be the one to take this Fire Blast. That's a fun little duo between Lantern and Skarmory. They cover each other's weaknesses uh, quite well. And uh, the same could be said for Blissey, which has come in to assert its superiority, perhaps. Uh, Lantern, unfortunately, a bit of a victim of circumstance in ADVOU. Skarmory comes back in to take that Ice Beam. And probably going to put a spike up here. Indeed, we shall. But Blissey reveals Thunderbolt, which uh, takes another big chunk out of Skarm. I will now uh, rectify the situation and make the spike visible. Skarmy tries to protect again for more chip heal, but Charizard is back in. And substituting, Skarmory risks its life to Toxic. Um, Teraday perhaps expecting the switch to Lantern, but welcoming this opportunity to also uh, take Skarm down. And now Lantern uh, has to be careful because Charizard very commonly runs Hidden Power Grass. Uh, going to protect uh, for some scouting, I suppose. That's a bit of an interesting option with Tyranitar Sand Lead. You're canceling out your chip heal. And Lantern doesn't have the luxury of a ton of move slots. But Gengar will now switch in on the what was the finishing blow, that HP Grass again, and now Charizard is the one who must leave the premises. It's no longer welcome here. And it'll be a nice double from James to Metagross on the Blissey. Well played. And now something is taking something. Uh, Teraday's own Metagross will be the one taking the Meteor Mash. And we are at a standstill. This Metagross, uh, the one that remains, is not leftovers. And Arrow expertly pivots in on the Earthquake. And Swampert will be the response to take the Rock Slide. The initiative now back in Teraday's favor that we a Surf on Lantern manages to hang on, but uh, probably cannot accomplish much else. That'll be a double back into Metagross on Gengar this time. Gengar, a little faster, can toss out a Will-O-Wisp. We see Metagross getting burned, and that burn is actually going to stop the Meteor Mash from killing after Sand. Uh, well placed, and now... Teraday's Metagross comes in, and James predicts it with the Earthquake, but the burn makes that also not a kill. This burn is denying so many opportunities in life. We see Protect there to perhaps scout an explosion. An interesting option on Metagross. And Earthquake is going to not quite do the job, but James's Metagross will. Charizard is now in. Uh, will presumably kill this, unless, of course, Fire Blast goes to the left and allows Metagross to explode. Uh, tremendous value, despite being burned, and now the two Gengars uh, stare each other down, both with big grins on their faces, arms wide open, ready to hug, but it seems they have other plans between Ice Punch and Will-O-Wisp. And Tyranitar comes in, and Blissey will be the response, neither Gengar wanting to stick around for another, another round, it seems, and a Brick Break from Tyranitar will be... 
the finishing blow on Bussy. Swampert comes in, expecting perhaps more of a physical set, but it is in fact mixed Tyranitar with HP Grass. The Surf not dealing quite enough. Swampert protects for more chip heal. Tyranitar continues to swing. Something is taking this HP Grass. Uh, Gengar resists it, but it is, of course, very low. It would probably kill after Sand. But now it has the opportunity, in exchange for Swampert's life, to force Tyranitar out. And James happy to let Tyranitar go down to the Giga Drain. Gengar getting a bit of health back. Um, might actually be a, a big deal. Maybe not so much in this situation, but... Fire Punch will take Gengar just low enough to die after Sand. Well, James's Gengar proves the victor. And Teraday's last stand in this Tyranitar. Gengar exploding to deny a uh, Dragon Dance. Very well done. And Aerodactyl will clean it up with HP fighting. Uh, very nicely played by James there in the endgame. Lantern uh, manages to make it to the end. And uh, put in some, some good work holding off the Charizard. Which would otherwise be a little difficult to come into. So, well played for James. Let's see how... These players adapt in the game two, which is occurring right now. Tyranitar lead again from James, and Teraday this time bringing the Medicant. Uh, what this Pokemon cannot do is unclear to us at the moment. But uh, of course, Medicham threatening the fighting moves into Tyranitar right now. James would have to be crazy to stay in on this, at least as a layer one option. Of course, choosing to switch to Gengar to tank a fighting move, but well done from Teraday, reading the switch into a big choice banded rock slide, I believe. Gengar tries to wisp the Metacham, but of course, he has evacuated the premises. And Gengar will simply explode on the Celebi, having that low health. Gonna take a nice chunk out. Skarm could actually finish this off here with a Drill Peck, Breloom, very bold, uh, coming in on that, but... I mean, the Mushroom is in. And Celebi will be the one to take a Spore. Not a huge deal because of Natural Cure, but of course, you don't accomplish much, and this Focus Punch is going to hurt. Celebi happy to take it, though, and just sleep this off. And there we see the Natural Cure. Skarm comes in this time on, ooh, HP Bug, I have to imagine, in that situation. And Swampert will be the double, this time taking a Spore. Uh, going to bed, he just got here, he's already asleep on the job. And this time the Focus Punch will be directed towards Skarmory. Big damage. Metacham comes back in. And a Drill Peck this time. Uh, Teraday perhaps relying on the Protect habit from Game 1 that James had, but... James uh, this time redeeming himself a little bit with some aggression on what would otherwise be guaranteed chip heal. Uh, Swampert comes in to, uh, still asleep of course, to take this Meteor Mash. This Metagross is also not lefties, I have to assume banded. Well, I don't have to, but I choose to assume this. Skarmory going to protect with chip heal, Meteor Mash whiffing, but doesn't matter. And now Celebi returns uh, to simply die to the Meteor Mash. Swampert back in. Going to try to tank some damage here and sleep off this Spore a little bit. But the Metagross continues to swing. Swampert is still asleep and will go down here if uh, all goes to plan for Teraday. And now getting the attack raise is a, a little cherry on top. Aerodactyl in. Tries to Earthquake, but not quite enough to kill. And that's going to be another easy Meteor Mash. And Tyranitar's last stand... Meteor Mash to the left, which will allow Tyranitar to kill it with the Earthquake. But now Breloom is in. Uh, Swampert is dead, so another Pokemon can be put to sleep here, but choosing to swing. Uh, Teraday expecting Skarm to just come in immediately, I guess. But uh, either way, you can Spore Focus Punch these last two to death uh, without a problem. And that is exactly what I think we will see happen here. It is a sleepy Tyranitar that is now dead. At least it went peacefully. Um, and the same will be said for Skarm. As it is Spored. And Breloom charges up the Focus Punch as expected. 
Nicely played from Terde. James uh, got a, caught a little uh, off guard by the aggression, perhaps. The Metacham right off the bat. The Breloom, of course, with that great, uh, great value. Uh, the Swampert going to sleep was uh, definitely very pivotal and paved the way for Metagross to just start mashing, as it were. And Breloom comes back in later to uh, clean things up. Nicely done. Now on to what I can only assume will be an exciting and climactic third game. In the lead, we see the return of Metacant into the Tyranitar once again. If you are simple-minded and lack theory of mind, you may think that Tyranitar is forced to leave here, but that's exactly what Teraday took advantage of in the last game with a big rock slide to punish the switch out. So let's see how it shakes out. Skarmory will come in, and Metacham simply choosing to Brick Break. Very good damage on Skarm, even though that was clearly intended to hit the Tyranitar. And the second choice band with a crit on top is just going to end it. Skarm not even chip healing there. Teradai had been punishing that all set. Um, and Aerodactyl will double edge into its brethren as Metagross takes the subsequent Rock Slide. And Metayuck makes a return to take the Earthquake. Uh, we saw Mediok do quite the damage last game. Uh, but Gengar will uh, take this Earthquake, and Metagross seems to be choice banded, so that will uh, prompt it to evacuate. So it'll be coming in to take not too much damage from that Fire Punch in the grand scheme of things. Tyranitar in on maybe a suspected Psychic, but this case dodging the Leech Seed. Now threatening HP Bug or Fire Blast. Breloom will come in, never being given the chance to uh, perform the same crimes it did last game. Metacham looking to Rock Slide to catch another switch, but Tyranitar stays in this time, getting the flinch, which will take Tyranitar quite low. Tyranitar will Rock Slide in response. It's a mixed set. And it comes down to Metacham Rock Sliding again, and now Gengar will come in to make sure Metacham stops right there. Celebi, of course, back in, but this time the Fire Punch will crit, and Celebi will go down. Tyranitar, or sorry, Tyranitar D now, I believe that is a new form introduced, uh, is going to Dragon Dance in the face of Gengar, which could have had Wisp. You can only assume this DD Tar has Lumberry. Metagross protecting, actually, in the... Uh, sure, whatever, floats your boat. I, that Earthquake, I don't think the crit mattered. Uh, actually, Teraday is confirming in the chat that that crit did matter and pretending that they are bluffing, but I know the truth of the matter. I don't. Uh, Ty Tyranitar does manage to get a second DD up, though, and that means it outspeeds Arrow, and I can only assume that this means the end of the game. The last is Lantern, who can only pray that its life has ended swiftly and painlessly. Earthquake will do exactly that. Nicely done by Teraday. Uh, good set all around. Nice conversation, uh, by which I mean back and forth adaptation between the players over the course of the set. Always fun to see that. Um, yeah, Teraday with a effective offensive team taking the latter two games as Lantern simply could not keep up in the end, but doing a good job in game one. That'll be our thumbnail, let me tell you. Um, yes, well, thank you for watching this game, and to these gamers, good luck in the rest of the tournament, and to the audience watching this, also good luck, uh, just in general, I suppose, but also with watching the rest of the tournament. Uh, farewell for now.